Hello and welcome to Business Matters, a show that strives to explore that subject from a variety of viewpoints and scenarios, featuring interviews with the people helping to grow jobs, the economy, and the Blue Ridge region. Because business matters. I'm Gene Morano, a radio and print journalist and the editor of Valley Business Front magazine. All right, my guest on today's show will talk about the Regional Acceleration and Mentoring Program, or RAMP, which focuses on high, helping high-tech startups grow over a 12-week program. Mary Miller is Executive Director for RAMP, which is based in downtown Roanoke. John Phillips is President of the Roanoke Blacksburg Technology Council, and also joining us is the co-founder of Quick Tech Medical, Glenn Fight. They are a RAMP uh, cohort graduate. Uh, welcome all to the show. Appreciate it. Um, let's start with you, Mary. Talk about how many this, how many years this now is for mm-hmm. RAMP. And what was the realization, Mary, that something like a RAMP program was needed to help grow high-tech businesses in the area? Well, regions um, have for a long time understood that when you start supporting your startups, it's true economic development. And so it has been on the radar for this region for a long time. Um, we actually just finished our fourth cohort We've been running one cohort a year. So it began in 2017, and we're going into 2021 with our fifth cohort. Uh, Mm -hmm. But it it has been something that the region worked for for a long time before they stood it up in 2017. Now, there are Main Street programs around. uh, The gauntlet comes to mind. But uh, RAMP is specifically focused on more of a high-tech business. And uh, we've talked about this before. But that's sort of a wide scope as to what is high-tech. Talk about, you know, the type of applications that you you look for when people you know come in and um they want to be one of the cohort members sure well um you know the state of virginia really put out a lot of guidelines as to what direction what kind of other additional companies do we need to start and the technology company tends to have uh good salaries in the technology company as well as selling uh in a broad scope so we were looking for companies that will sell beyond um, a Main Street business, uh, as well as higher than regional salaries in that technology world. So our scope is very broad. We're looking at technology-based companies um, that have a global uh, interest as far as their product development. Mm-hmm. How is RAMP funded? Well, RAMP is funded uh, a number of ways. We, we do have grants at the moment. We've had uh, a number of Go Virginia grants as well as we've just recently obtained a new federal grant through the EDA. Um, and with, with those grants, we've been able to match regional resources. So the counties surrounding us, as well as the city, Roanoke City, Roanoke County, Salem, Botetot, uh, all of those entities actually help us afford to deliver these programs regionally, as well as corporate sponsors. So we have additional corporate sponsors that we're really proud of across the region. Uh, Woods Rogers, uh, Gentry Locke, um, the Mitchell Law Firm, for example, in Blacksburg. So we have a number of uh, wonderful corporate sponsors as well. And, and that uh, that uh, federal funding is also going to help you run, be able to run two cohorts a, a year now. The, the, uh, by the time this airs, I think the second, the first cohort of 2021 will be running. And that has a special focus. Talk about that. Yes. um, Because of the funding that we've been able to receive, we're able to add additional programming. And um, one of them is a cohort that is focused around the health and life sciences. And that's a really broad area as well. Uh, But we realize that in our region, life sciences and health sciences are really key uh, to our economy. And so between Carillion and Fralin and Virginia Tech and others in the area, there's quite a bit of support for uh, helping these companies move out to grow, move outside the university, spin out, start up. And so we're, we're our first cohort in 2021 will be focused on the health and life sciences uh, as a collective group. Mm-hmm. John Phillips is president of the role of Glassburg Technology Council. John, talk about the role of the RBTC in relationship to RAMP. Well, certainly uh, the RBTC started about 20 years ago. And since that time, they recognized the need to really develop the ecosystem throughout the region. And that meant uh, helping startups get off the ground. The ability for a startup to go from a, a concept and an idea uh, to that greater um, operating company with employees 
is, is, a, is a big leap. And the RBTC provides mentors uh, into RAMP. Uh, a lot of senior executives who have been there and, and, um, and had that experience and are able to guide folks that are just starting out is a tremendous benefit. Uh, and actually, RAMP really was, in essence, a startup or a spin out within the RBTC originally, too. So we really look at it as a great partnership now. And certainly the two are very directly related. How many members are in the RBTC right now, John? RBTC runs about 200 members of technology companies of all sizes, uh, right up to pretty large, uh, large, large ones like the 1901 group or, uh, or Torque, and then uh, smaller startups that are coming out of ramp are members of the RBTC as well. So we've got a full dynamic uh, group uh, brought together. Right, and Mary, uh, Mary Miller with Ramp. Uh, there's, there's other partners. Uh, Virginia Western and the City of Roanoke are really partnering on this effort too. And talk about their role with the uh, with the regional accelerator. Yeah, Gene, I, I certainly don't want to leave that out. When we when Ramp began, um, there was a, uh, a a state contract to help us revamp that building downtown, a week, the Gill Memorial Clinic, and 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 bringing that together, making all of this come together, was the City of Roanoke the Blacksburg Technology Council, the Roanoke Blacksburg Technology Council and Virginia Western. So Virginia Western played a key partnership role as one of the founding members of getting all of this started in 2017. And I think Virginia Western is providing some basic business training for some of these members. Yes, they do. They they support um, the educational aspect of the program financially, and they bring uh, a lot of resources. In addition, I have to great, give a great shout out to Virginia Western. Many of our companies um, have hired graduates of Virginia Western. They have a number of technical programs that are really preparing graduates well to work in technology sectors. So a number of our companies kind of reach into Virginia Western and uh, find their new uh, employees. Hmm? Let's, talk, let's talk to Glenn Fight from um, Quick Tech Medical. Glenn, talk about your experience in the cohort and uh, and exactly what Quick Tech Medical Medical is. When when were you in one of the cohorts at Ramp? So we just finished up the latest cohort at Ramp uh, this past year. Um, it was an amazing experience. It really helped accelerate our company, uh, whose mission is to really make orthopedic recovery faster easier and more affordable for patients. Uh, so one of the best things about the cohort that we were able to do is just meet amazing mentors. Um, even though it was all virtual during the pandemic, um, Mary and the rest of the team really put a, a strong emphasis on relationships and meeting people within the larger Roanoke Valley community. And so that's been huge to accelerate our company and really drive us forward. So what do you actually do? What do you actually make? Uh, we're creating a uh, mobile app on your phone uh, that will allow patients who are going through physical therapy, occupational therapy, um, or even just orthopedic recovery on their own um, to actively measure their progression um, and track it. So just as you might track your weight, as you're trying to lose weight, you know, you buy a scale and you track your weight every single day, you're now able to track things like your range of motion over time and see how well you're doing. And if you're on track to recovery or not. You know, I, I, I smiled because I had to take physical therapy for a knee injury in the past, and I was terrible at it. I was terrible, this is years ago, terrible at staying on track, terrible about doing my exercises and all that. So it's sort of almost like you, if you're a runner and you use Strava or something, this is some way, uh, basically a reminder for people. It sounds like a great idea. What stage are you at now? Are you, are you commercializing it yet or what? It, right now, we're in the middle of our, our prototyping phase. Um, we're very close to releasing a, uh, a first full prototype that we're going to be testing out uh, in clinics, potentially even here at Carilion Clinic in Roanoke. And so that really goes back to the larger community that we've been able to tap into. Um, we've, we've had great mentors that have been part of Carilion, I mean, that currently work there and that have been helping us along the process. And so being able to access uh, networks of patients and doctors and physicians has been truly invaluable for us. So do you have a medical background yourself? No, I'm, I'm actually a, a recent graduate, of, um, but I'm working with a team of other people, including those with medical backgrounds. Um, and I've worked on a, a medical a device company in the past. Okay. I want to ask you, Mary uh, and, and John, you could talk about this too. Talk about the 
having to go virtual in, in, in uh, 2020. And I, I, I'm assuming it's going to be virtual or some type of hybrid for this, at least for this first cohort of the year. Uh, what did you learn about going virtual, John and Mary, last year with the cohorts? You know, what maybe worked better, what maybe didn't work as well? Well, I, I will say that, um, like all of us, we found a way to make it work. Um, in some regards, um, it was it was tougher. I mean, I really, I really love the contact time with these companies. I love, um, you know, watching them work and just kind of listening to them work. And so I love when they're when the Gill Building is full and we have everyone there. I think we lost that. We missed that. Um, however. We were able to deliver, I think, a very impactful program. And we also were able to bring uh, mentors to the table that wanted to work with these companies without having to leave their office or leave their home and, and drive it. So we made it work in some regard extremely well. Um, to uh, Glenn's point, this region is incredibly generous and, and knowledgeable and experienced. And we can reach into the region and find that generosity and the, the, the knowledge and the experience to, to have a meeting, a meetup with someone like Glenn because they're, they will. And so in some regard, it made it a little bit easier, but I, I personally feel as if we really missed the contact time, uh, but we'll make, it, we'll make it up. And this cohort coming in is going to be similar. We're going to run it virtually until we know we're all safe enough to come together and work together. And John, did it did it help with maybe recruiting more mentors from the RBTC because they did not have to, you know, schlep up to Roanoke to uh, to sit in with people? <laughs> well, I I, I think that uh, they enjoy the contact too, just like Mary's talking about. But certainly, you know, you've got the convenience factor. The virtual convenience factor is pretty is pretty significant. Uh, although I'm, I'm sure lots of folks who've been at home on Zoom meetings, one after another after another, think that it'd be nice to have a little bit of a break in between, too. So there's, there's two sides of that coin. But as the RBTC is certainly a membership organization, and so we really thrive on that connection and networking. And, and the fact that when you have a lot of people together, you're able to generate ideas that lead to new uh, programs, they lead to new businesses, they lead to new opportunities for folks. So we do miss that type of uh, interaction, but we were able to pivot and put on more than 50 different uh, programs and do them virtually and launch some new uh, initiatives with our, uh, with talent training and development as well. So we've made good use of the time, but we certainly really look forward to getting back uh, when the day comes. Glenn Fight, let me ask you, how did the virtual go for you? And, and what's the biggest thing that you think you got out of ramp for Quick Tech Medical? Was it some of the, the, the business background training or, or putting a business plan together? What's the biggest thing that you came away with, do you think? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think Mary and the rest of the team really made virtual work in, in a way that is very hard to do. And, and they executed on well. Um, we didn't sit through ridiculously long, you know, eight hour Zoom meetings every single day. I think they broke it up very nicely. And, and you know, the, the, that, can, that can get very exhausting for sure. Um, but, but even virtually over Zoom, we were able to meet with, with amazing people. Um, and I would say that was definitely the best thing, as I mentioned before. Um, specifically, the advice that they gave, the frameworks that they walked us through, um, and the processes that we went through to go back and talk to our future customers, um, talk to people that would actually be using our product, and get feedback from them early on in the process to make sure that what we're building is something that's going to be valuable in the market. Um, was, was definitely the, the most tangible and, and best aspect that came out of RAM for us. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, Mary and John, if you can point to some uh, home runs at this point, uh, or uh, do we have a, a number of doubles and triples hitters at this point as far as the people that have come up out mm -hmm. of RAM, as far as finding financing, growing employees, that type of thing. And I, th I think that's one of the things that RAMP also does is, is kind of connect people to potential investors, correct? Uh, that that is correct, um, Jean. And I I kind of I'm smiling because you know um, 
progress all along the way matters. Um, I think I did share with you, we've had 24 companies come through RAMP. Our goal is to also help them grow and find the resources they need for the long haul. The new grant that we just received gives us a three-year window to continue to work with an alumni. So while Glenn has just finished his cohort, for three years, he'll be able to reach into the network and have us help him jump over hoops, connect him and so forth. And so we kind of call it the exit ramp over a three year time period. But the reality is we've had a lot of success and we are gonna to continue to see more success. I mean, I, I, some of the big ones that have been written about and shared across the region, certainly Microharmonics, uh, which is out in Botetourt County, is just going to be a real company to watch in the long haul. They're just doing tremendous work selling for their product worldwide. And I encourage people to take a look into microharmonics. Another one that's just really blasting off in 2020 is Ticket Spigot. Ticket Spigot uh, sells ticketing platforms into high schools and they're just growing by leaps and bounds. The last time I talked to Russell Hertzberg, uh, the owner, he had hired 22 people working for his company. When he came through ramp the year before Glenn, he had two people. So we look at we look at the growth of a two people to a 22 people growth, it's significant. And, and yes, we are beginning to really garner a lot of interest from investors, which is a good thing. So one of the benefits of being in ramp is that we held this last year a statewide opportunity for these companies to pitch to VCs through the Mid-Atlantic region. And we that was coordinated across the state of Virginia. Uh, we were able to bring forward six companies and that went extremely well. So I would say to people watching this show, if you're interested in angel investing or VC investing, I'd love to talk to you and help you understand what the opportunities are as well as um, just growing your company. We've got, we've got just tremendous things happening in the region, really good things. John, talk about some of your mentors when they when Gina, they. I think one of the. Go ahead. I was going to say one. I think one of the good points that you hear when Mary tells that is the example of how all these different companies are scattered throughout the Roanoke Valley and the New River Valley. I mean, we certainly identify Ramp as its physical location in the heart of uh, Roanoke, which is tremendous, and it's just a great location. But you know, these companies they grow and they move out to these other different locations. So in the entire region really is benefiting from these companies coming through the RAMP program. I'm wondering, John, if some of your mentors, when they get with a kid that's got an idea, like Ticket Spicket, which I've heard you talk about before, they're concentrating on the high school sports niche, uh, selling tickets, and especially in this time of COVID, you know, to really keep in a, a lid on how many people can get in the facility. I'm wondering, John, if uh, some of your mentors go, who are a lot of them are entrepreneurs themselves, probably they say, man, I wish I thought it, would have thought of that. Well, absolutely. I'm sure a few of them do. They, they are often though involved with those companies and they get the excitement of watching them go through that startup process and, and reliving it again. And they're, ability to actually bring in their perspectives and and all into that company as it gets launched and gets started with that and you know i'm sure they they don't miss having the sleepless nights that some of our entrepreneurs may experience when they first get started <laughs> you know you mentioned john um and mary and glenn for that matter but uh, you mentioned um uh what's going on between the roanoke and the new river valleys in terms of job creation recruiting talent things like that. Is there a way to draw the two valleys closer together? Can technology help do that? You know, you come from a big city and, you know, commuting 30, 40, 50 miles is not a big deal. Here it's such a big deal in topography and all that. Is there a better way to draw the valleys closer together when it comes to attracting talent from both uh, valleys to a, a job site or something? Is, is there a way to make that happen? And, and can technology help do that? Well, certainly technology um, benefits that initiative as, as we're able to uh, have folks distance uh, learning, but also working remotely, their ability to really uh, live, live here and work anywhere, I think is the Roanoke Regional Partnerships uh, uh, current slogan. And I think it's a great slogan. It says a lot about that. Also, you know, the RBTC has certainly tried to bridge that gap since its very beginning as being one of the organizations that really covers that full gamut of the Newer Valley and, and the Roanoke Valley as well. 
And I think you're starting to see as companies have operations in both locations and see the ability to draw talent from both of those locations, it, that it's a, a great benefit to them. But when we're trying to attract talent into a region, talent, uh, particularly coming from outside the region, is particularly interested to see uh, is the company that they're coming to work for may be a great dynamic company, but are there other companies around that allow them to have some career progression and opportunities too? So when you put together all these different businesses in both of these regions, they get that mutual business, that mutual benefit of the cluster effect. And I think we really are well on our way to having some significant clusters in the region. I wanted to ask Glenn Fite from Quick Tech Medical, um, you know, I guess it was a little harder in the virtual atmosphere, but were you able to hobnob with other entrepreneurs, startup business owners, and do you guys learn from each other? Was that something you got out of the RAMP program or RBTC? Definitely. Yeah. And one of the really fun things for me was, was to see people that I've known in the past, even before RAMP, um, come into the RAMP cohort with me. And so we were able to go through that process together. I think that that's a huge part of it. Um, unfortunately, you're right. Some of it was lost because it was virtual. Uh, but that being said, we still um, obviously saw each other on Zoom a lot. Um, we were able to connect outside of Zoom, outside of just the live sessions that Ramp put on. Um, and we still had access to the office space in Roanoke, um, where I was able to bump into a couple people um, with all COVID precautions, of course. Um, and yes, that was tremendously valuable. It, it, it can really feel lonely going through the startup and just entrepreneurship process in general. Um, and so mm -hmm. being able to share that experience with other people um, in an entire cohort is, is, is tremendously underrated. Mary, I saw you smiling. Do you, did, did you, do you like it when, especially when they were able to come on site, when you see these startups and these business uh, entrepreneurs talking to each other, they get, they get excited. Maybe the room gets noisy. Do you, do you appreciate that? Well, I, I, I appreciate how much they care for one another and they, they understand and appreciate each other's journeys. And so sometimes it sometimes when it's one thing for a really successful individual who's not working uh, to say to you, come on, come on, Glenn, you can do this versus sitting down with somebody who's at your same space and helping you sort things out. So you need both. You need, you need that, that cohort uh, group. Um, Glenn didn't experience it quite as much. I hope that that'll be stronger in the future as we bring back alumni. So alumni get to know alumni. There are some of my companies that have gone through ramp, the alumni who who are just so connected. And what, one of the things that Jane, that we, we want them to understand is that this is the region to grow your technology-based company. We're going to help you. The, your other cohort members are going to help you. We're going to do this together. You are not alone and we have what it takes to help you step forward. And so it, it's all of it. It's, it. it's part of the community. And you know, I look forward to the day that Glenn, Glenn will be an outstanding mentor in uh, years to come. He will take on a young company, he will help them and, and he'll have the experience to do that. So it, they all wanna give back. Uh, he's on my radar, he's not going anywhere. He's one of the best. So he'll be, he'll be back repaying what was given to him. All right, Glenn, you've been warned. Uh, talk, about, uh, talk about demo days, what that is, um, uh, what that entails. And that's something that basically all the RAMP cohort graduates get to sort of put on the dog and you know, show what they're doing to investors and other people. Talk about that experience, any of you. Well, I will. I'm I think like it'd Glenn be interesting to hear what Glenn, Glenn just went through that experience, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Glenn, let's start with you, Glenn. How was that experience? And, and you know, I mean, is it sort of like auditioning? <laughs> it's, um, I, I guess, the, the best way to describe it might be if you've ever watched Shark Tank. Um, it's kind of like, you know, pitching the company just like that. Um, there's not like a room of five sharks and investors sitting there, but um, it, it's kind of a similar experience. You want to walk them through um, your pitch, uh, your market, um, your product, obviously, um, things that investors care about. But, but a special part of this demo day was also talking about the journey through Ramp um, and kind of how we progressed coming into Ramp versus where we are today um, you know, during that demo day. Uh, of course, this, this demo day was, was virtual. Um, so it was a little bit different than, than previous demo days that Ramp might have had. 
um, but they still definitely made it work. It was extremely well produced. We recorded it um, previously, um, and we were able to uh, to deliver a really solid presentation um, in front of I think a couple hundred people, right, Mary? That that were able to to see every member of the cohort what they're working on. Um, and the best part of that is being able to meet additional people in the community that can then help you because they hear your pitch, they want to help out, or they're interested in, in hearing more. And so we were able to set up follow-up meetings with those people um, and get them involved. And, and uh, yeah, it's just a great experience. And to wrap up, uh, Mary or John, you want to talk about demo days as far as what, uh, maybe what RAMP learns about it or RBTC learns about it and how to tweak things going forward. Yes, I mean, everything that Glenn said, um, it is an opportunity for us to share with the community these companies, where they are and where they're going. So our demo day is also a community celebration and bringing together our sponsors and the mentors and celebrating these startup companies. Glenn will take his, his pitch and he will, will refine it and kind of stay very focused as he continues to pitch to investors. So investors are used to pitches that have a certain set of criteria and information for them to evaluate whether or not they want to make an investment. So we try to include that as well. And, and But our demo day across this region is a celebration of where we are as a region and um, opening the door to those people, like Glenn said, that want to get involved, want to know more, and um, want to participate and may someday be an entrepreneur themselves. All right, John, a quick last word about demo days or about RAMP? I think it's a great program. I think people really identify with RAMP, and that's a, a good reason for folks to get involved with the RBTC. And also the RBTC tries to reach many different folks at all different levels through education opportunities, as well as networking, as well as growth and leadership, too. So it's a great program. All right. We've been talking with Mary Miller, John Phillips, and Glenn Fight about the RAM program. We'll have to leave it there. I want to thank you all. This is Business Matters. I'm Gene Moran. We'll see you next time. If you have any questions or show suggestions, email us at businessmatters at blueridgepbs.org. And if you missed any of our previous episodes, you can watch them on our website at blueridgepbs.org. 